Hey, it's Mr. Doro. Today we're going to be talking about a different type of stoichiometry. It's formula stoichiometry. And it deals with empirical and molecular formulas. And I'm going to want you to be able to determine empirical and molecular formulas by the time we're done. So here's a definition for molecular and empirical formulas. A molecular formula is a chemical formula showing the number and kinds of atoms in a compound. And that may look something like this. C4H10 or it may look like C8H20. It tells how many of each type of element are in the compound. But an empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of the elements in a compound, and actually both of these would have the same empirical formula because you could reduce them down to the ratios, the lowest whole number ratio, and that would be C2H5 would be the empirical formula for both of those up above. So these are brief steps for finding empirical formulas. Usually you'll be given percentages of each element in a compound. And so you don't have to write these down. We're going to be going through them step by step. So we're going to, first of all, we're going to change that percentage to grams. And that means we just put a grams instead of a percentage. Then we're going to divide the grams by the molar mass from the periodic table. We're going to divide each answer by the smallest number to get the ratio of them. Use the whole numbers as the subscripts. And if we're going to need it, we're going to multiply each subscript by two to get our whole numbers. So here's a typical problem that you might see for empirical formulas. What's the empirical formula for a compound that is 40.00% carbon, 6.72% hydrogen, and 53.28% oxygen by mass? So step one, breaking it down step by step, assume that you have a 100 gram sample to make each of the percentages equal to grams. Here's what I really like to do though. I like to just put carbon and we're going to separate these out because they're so easy to get mixed up. Carbon hydrogen and oxygen. And so what we have to start out with is 40.00 and instead of percent we're going to call it grams. If we had a 100 gram sample it would be 40 grams. 40% 40 of it would be 40 grams. This is going to be 6.72 grams and oxygen is going to be 53.28 grams. That's our starting point. Now our second step is we're going to divide each mass by the molar mass for that element and change it to moles. So here we go. Divide it by the molar mass of carbon, which is 12.01. Now that's actually grams per mole. So the answer that we're going to get in here is going to be moles. And 6.72 divided by 1.01 .01 grams per mole. And this is going to be divided by 16.00 grams per mole. And when I plug these in my handy dandy calculator, I get... 3.331 here and 6.65 here and 3.330 here. Now those would really be moles and those are the ratios of how they match up, but they're not pretty numbers. So we're going to try to make them pretty. And the way that we make them pretty is by taking those numbers and dividing each one of them by the smallest amount of moles that we just calculated. So we had 3.331, 6.65, 3.330. This is our smallest one, so we're going to divide each one of them by that. So divided by 3.330, divided by 3.330, divided by 3.330. I can do this one easily in my head is 1.000. Uh, this one is still, when I round it, is 1.000. Sometimes they're not always going to be right on a whole number, but they should be normally either close to a whole number, very close, or close to a half. And so this last one right here ends up being 2.00 in the correct number of sig figs. So what does it mean? This is a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of moles in the formula for that compound. So since that is the ratio in the compound for the formula, these end up being our subscripts. This is a subscript for carbon, for hydrogen, for oxygen. You know that we never write a 1 as a subscript. So our empirical formula is this, CH2O. The one carbon, because we only had one carbon to two hydrogens to one oxygen. You see, this is formula stoichiometry. It is not reaction stoichiometry, so this is the stoichiometry of how these go together within the formula, and that is our empirical formula, our EF. 
Now, sometimes they won't all be nice, pretty numbers like the 1 to 2 to 1. Sometimes they end up being like 1 to 2.5 to 2. And so we can't have put a 2.5 as a subscript, so we got to get them to all the whole numbers. If we multiply that by 2, then that would get a whole number, but then we'd have to multiply all these other ones by 2. We'll show you what that means in just a second. Well, once you know the empirical formula, there's only one little small step left to get the molecular formula. Since the empirical formula is the simplest form of the molecular formula, all we have to do are these steps right here. Determine the mass of the empirical formula from the periodic table, and then see how many times the empirical mass goes into the molecular mass. You have to be given the molecular mass in order to determine the molecular formula. Show you what that means in just a minute. Now don't freak out about this one. This is that same problem that we already did in the previous slides here. So what we have to do is we determined already the empirical formula. And the empirical formula that we determined by these percentages right here was CH2O. Now this says though, what is the molecular formula and molecular formula it wants to know. And it gives you a molecular mass of 120.12 AMUs. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to go to our periodic table and we have to find what is the formula mass or the molecular mass of CH2O. And when we look it up on the periodic table, carbon is 12.01, this is 1.01 .01 times 2 plus 16.00, and we end up with 30.03 AMUs. Now I know you could say grams if we were doing molar mass, but this was molecular mass. So one of these is 30.03 AMUs. But this says the molecular mass for this compound, remember this is the lowest whole number ratio, is 120.12 AMUs. So all we have to do is find out how many of these go into this. How many times does it go into that? So we do 120.12, that's the molecular mass, divided by the empirical formula mass, 30.03, and we find out that that is four times as much, which means that we have to do four times each one of these subscripts to get the molecular formula. So our molecular formula in this case is going to be c 4 h 8, because I'm four times in it, O4. Still the same ratio as the empirical formula, but it is the actual molecular formula, and I like to write molec formula because I don't like the initials for molecular formula. So let's go through those steps again together. This says, what is the empirical formula of a compound that's composed of 43.6% phosphorus and 56.4% oxygen by mass? And it wants to know the molecular formula. We'll take care of that afterwards. So going through our steps right here, we start with phosphorus. And phosphorus, it says, is 43.6%, which we're going to change to grams. So I'm going to get rid of that percent. And then divide that by the molar mass for phosphorus. And when I plug that in, I get 1.41. And then we're going to do the same thing for oxygen over here. Oxygen is 56.4%, but I'm going to change that to grams. Divide that by the molar mass for just plain old oxygen, which is 16.00. And I, when I do that, I get 3.53. Now, don't just stop right there because those are ugly numbers. We want pretty numbers. The pretty numbers we get by dividing each of these by the smaller of the two, which is 1.41. And this one's 1.41. This one's easy because it's 1.00. And this one is ends up being 2.50. Uh-oh, that's still fairly an ugly number. Now remember, we said that they should be right near to whole numbers, or if they're near to half numbers, then here's what we're going to do. We have to multiply this by 2 to get a whole number, and that's 5.00. But if we multiply that one by 2, we have to multiply this one by 2, 2.00. Now we have pretty numbers. Those are our subscripts. And so our empirical formula, the EF, is P2O5. You see, that's why I like to write the P and the O right up here, because then I just really can't mix these up very well. So P2O5. But it also wants to know our molecular formula. In our molecular formula, it gives us the mass of 283.88. So I need to find the mass of this empirical formula, P2O5. When I get that off my periodic table, it ends up being 141.94, 30.97 times 2, 
plus 5 times 16.00. And then, but my molecular mass is 283.88 AMUs. When I do this, I find out that that goes into that two times. And so I have to, for my molecular formula, I have to multiply both of those by two. It ends up being P4O10 for my molecular formula. So those are my answers right there. All right, well now I have two problems just like those for you to do. This is uh, empirical and molecular formula. Find the empirical formula first and using those percentages, go back through those steps if you need to and then find the molecular formula. There's another problem right after this, so stay tuned. Okay, well this is the last one and this is find empirical and molecular formula for 36.86% nitrogen, 63.14% oxygen by mass and then also find the molecular formula using that molecular mass. Have a great day. Bye-bye.